Good morning, folks. We've got new looks at methane, a drill going to the moon, top science news including a lesson for the world on GMO crops, and a potential error or conspiracy around the official solar flare data. Let's start and end with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we aim at the bronze 193 angstrom view of ionized iron. The dark central southern coronal hole has begun to steal the IMF connection to Earth and will likely intensify geospace conditions in the solar wind, when that stream arrives over the weekend. Meanwhile, the solar wind speed in purple has continued dropping here at Earth. The arrival of the stream will easily contrast with this calming telemetry, geomagnetism riding calm in the green. Let's go to some pretty things up first to ease into more complex science. New SVS animations of global methane over time and with seasonal variability. They were aiming to cover a bit more than a year's range of time from 2017 to 2018 here. Some of the concentrations make sense, others are more confusing. I've also sped up this animation a great deal, so there's even more detail and intricacy than you're getting right here. Link below. Moving on next to the moon, and that little thing you saw drop is part of the ESA's lunar mission planned for 2025. When their lander goes up, it will also launch a small probe to smash into the south pole of the moon. They've mapped where they think the water is in those forever dark south pole craters, and they're going to go looking for it. Well, folks, you'll remember just a few days ago, we reported that paper trying to debunk a major solar outburst in the isotope record from 3300 BC. That paper attempted to debunk that event, but also was very open in confirming others and saying that the 11-year solar cycle is very easily visible in plant rings. But here the authors of the 3300 BC blast have fired back, suggesting that the 3300 BC event does show up in multiple cores and also gave some explanation on how often you find non-homogeneous global distribution of those isotopes. Like if, for example, say, half the planet was facing a super flare and the other half was in darkness. Quick stop at Uranus up next. It turns out that space weather delivers punches there too. While going over data from Voyager, they found a surge of energy, a reversal of the anomaly, and then a return to normal. Their best guess is that a CME electrified and stripped away a blob of gas from the top of the atmosphere, which collected into a plasmoid as it blew off the planet, and then hit Voyager. Not a terrible guess, and also a good reminder that while the solar wind does slow down dramatically around Mars, it then collects into vastly more dense waves than we see in geospace here at Earth. Up next, if you don't know about the genetically modified cotton disaster in India, this story is a good one. They told them the crops would grow bigger and make their own insecticide. They did both for a while, but as the benefit of the modification began to lose its grip on credit for the spike in output, it has also stopped working against destructive aphids. The bugs developed a resistance, how about that? And now they have to buy more fertilizer and more insecticide than ever, especially with more plant mass to spray and protect. And the ground, it's been destroyed from going back to the way things were before. This is how you take over an entire commodity industry in a country and all because they toyed with creation for a few extra dollars. Up next, so get this, effective field theory has some different ways to interpret and rationalize data results. Without getting too much into it, when it comes to looking for dark matter, there are at least 14 different interpretations, ways to look at it. They tried them all here based on the world leading Lux data, and that makes dark matter failing 14 times in one paper. Now, Noah, you have a problem. This is the white paper meant to explain the transition to the new GOES X-ray data from the old ones. They're saying that a modification correction had been in place for years with the old satellites, but that it would no longer be used. They would be scaling down the GOES 15 and 14 data in the past, and so, since they're not doing that now, they tell us GOES 16 will be about 30% higher. Since someone was bound to notice that, they went ahead and fully explained why they had put the correction in place, why they won't be doing it anymore, and again, making sure you understand that without that correction, they expect GO16 to be about 30% higher. Problem is, it's 10 times lower. This is the GO's X-ray chart on March 11th and for the three days previous. This was just two weeks ago. This was the official shutoff and storage date range for the GO15 data, 
which is the green and yellow here you can see cut off on the left side of the chart. Now I'll flip the colors to make the legend easier to read for just a moment. And while I do so and flip back, look at where those cutoff curves are, about an order of magnitude higher than the current GO16 data which continues running along the bottom of the chart. But GO16 was supposed to be 30% higher than GO15. You can see that it was just two days after they turned off 15, they missed that little flip flare blip there and tried to quickly turn the satellite 15 on again. That's where the green and yellow return. Not sure what happened in the following hours, but next day, the green and yellow blip was off of that chart, deleted. You could still see they're ending the original data stream on the left side. And to this day, GO16 still rides about 10 times lower than GO15. Meanwhile, They've told everyone GO16 is 30% higher. So, when it reads X-Class Solar Flare in, say, a year or two from now, and other scientists are downgrading its relevance 30% by comparison to last cycle flares, will observers need to know it's really 10 times stronger? I've sent the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center numerous emails the last two weeks, but either they are ignoring me or the coronavirus trumps watching the sun. I say we poke them a little bit. Website members, you had a mind-expanding Deeper Look episode yesterday on sunspots and what lies beneath. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.